Hey everyone, this lesson is on vitamin B6 deficiency. So we're gonna first talk about what vitamin B6 is. So vitamin B6 is also known as pyridoxine. It is a water-soluble vitamin. And why do we need vitamin B6? Well, we actually need it because it's required for many processes in our body. I'm gonna talk about these processes in more detail in the next slide, but briefly, it's involved in nutrient metabolism, so lipid and carbohydrate metabolism. It's required for proper neurological functioning, and it's involved in immune system functioning as well. There are actually many dietary sources of vitamin B6. We have to get it from our diet, but there are many different dietary sources. These include meat and fish, nuts, legumes, and fruits and vegetables. And the recommended daily allowance of vitamin B6 includes the following. For adults, one to 1.7 milligrams per day is the recommended daily allowance. It changes for individuals who are pregnant or lactating. These include about 1.9 to 2 milligrams per day. And in children, it is slightly less, anywhere from 0.5 to 1 milligram per day, depending on the age of the child. So what are the processes whereby we need vitamin B6? So there are actually more than 100 enzymes that utilize vitamin B6 or pyridoxine. So we're gonna just talk about some of the categories of systems that utilize or require vitamin B6. These include nutrient metabolism. So some processes that vitamin B6 is necessary for with regards to nutrient metabolism include gluconeogenesis, so new formation of glucose when glucose levels are low, glycogenolysis, so breakdown of glycogen stores, especially when exercising or fasting, carbohydrate metabolism, homocysteine metabolism, so amino acid metabolism, but more specifically homocysteine metabolism, and lipid metabolism as well. Now vitamin B6 is also important for hemoglobin synthesis because it is involved in several steps in synthesis of the porphyrin ring as part of hemoglobin. Vitamin B6 is also important for neurological functioning as it is important in neurotransmitter synthesis. And it's also important in immune system functioning as it is involved in the production of interleukin-2. So again, a lot of different roles that vitamin B6 plays, but these are the main categories. Nutrient metabolism, so a lot of things in nutrient metabolism. Hemoglobin synthesis, because it is involved in synthesis of porphyrin ring. Neurological functioning, as it is involved in neurotransmitter synthesis. And immune system functioning, as it is involved in interleukin-2 production. Let's talk about vitamin B6 deficiency. So first, we're gonna talk about how it's absorbed, metabolized, and excreted. So vitamin B6 is absorbed in the small intestine, more specifically in the jejunum, the second part of the small intestine. It's then metabolized to the active form of the vitamin in the liver, and then it's excreted in urine from the kidney. So there are several different categories of causes of vitamin B6 deficiency, we're gonna go through them. The first one is low intake, so this makes sense if you're not taking in enough vitamin B6, you're going to be deficient in it. And these states include chronic alcoholism and malnutrition. We can also see issues with reduced absorption in disease states like celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, and gastrointestinal surgeries where portions of the gastrointestinal tract are removed so there is less surface area for absorption to take place. The third category of causes is increased utilization. And in this category, it includes pregnancy and even hyperthyroidism. So a high-functioning thyroid can lead to increased utilization of vitamin B6. Another category of causes is increased losses. And we can see this with hemodialysis and renal failure. And certain medications can lead to a vitamin B6 deficiency. These include isoniazid, hydralazine, penicillamine, and corticosteroids. So again, five different categories of causes here. Low intake reduced absorption, increased utilization, increased losses, and certain medications. So what are some of the clinical features of vitamin B6 deficiency? So we're gonna break it down into different systems. The first one we're gonna talk about is the neurological system. So in children, a vitamin B6 deficiency may lead to seizures. And in a child who has seizures and is given anti-seizure medication, if the anti-seizure medication is not working, vitamin B6 deficiency should be thought about. In adults, vitamin B6 deficiency can lead to altered mental status or confusion. And there can also be peripheral neuropathy as well. So a numbness, tingling sensation in the extremities and peripheral nerves. 
There are also psychiatric symptoms that can occur with vitamin B6 deficiency. In adults, vitamin B6 deficiency can lead to depression. And there's also integumentary or skin signs and symptoms that can occur with vitamin B6 deficiency. One finding is seborrheic dermatitis, so a dermatitis where there is hair-bearing areas, so the head, beards, those types of areas. Glossitis, so an inflammation of the tongue. There can be tongue sores, as we can see here. And chelitis, so chelitis is where on the edge of the lips there can be sores, so this can be caused by vitamin B6 deficiency as well. And there's also hematological findings. We can see anemia, so low hemoglobin, low blood count. We can see microcytic anemia with a vitamin B6 deficiency. We can see sideroblastic anemia, so here's a ringed sideroblast. And we can see normocytic anemia, so microcytic anemia where the cells are smaller in shape, normocytic anemia where they are normal shaped. So again, the clinical features include neurological issues like seizures in children and altered mental status in adults, psychiatric symptoms like depression in adults, and integumentary findings like seborrheic dermatitis, glossitis, and angular chelosis. And with regards to hematological findings, so findings on lab work, we can see microcytic or normocytic anemia, and we could also see sideroblastic anemia, which is a type of microcytic anemia. So how is vitamin B6 deficiency diagnosed and treated? So diagnosis is often a clinical diagnosis. We look at the risk factors, we look at the signs and symptoms, and that can lead to a diagnosis. But serum pyridoxal phosphate could also be measured, and it is low in vitamin B6 deficiency. And once a clinician has diagnosed vitamin B6 deficiency, the treatment involves identifying risk factors and underlying causes. So a lot of those risk factors we talked about before. And then giving oral supplements of pyridoxine or vitamin B6. And generally the dose is 50 to 100 milligrams per day for adults. So if you want to learn more about other nutrient deficiencies, please check out my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.